Hi, my name is Alexis DiGirolami, and I am the project lead of Pend. And I'm Emily Krebs, and I am the lead designer of Pend. And Pend is a 3D action adventure game in which the player uses vocabulary words to shape the game world as well as gameplay. It is a quasi-educational game that seeks to introduce educational elements into a more traditional hack-and-slash setting that older, serious gamers will find comfortable. You play as Finley, a 22-year-old harried female intern trying to become a full-time librarian in the gigantic Library of Realities. On the day of her final review, she notices a nefarious force infiltrating the books of the classic section, which she oversees. In order to pass her review, she will need to venture inside each book world and, using her company-issued feather quill, which can turn into a sword, battle the corruption therein. Okay, so the biggest things that we wanted to talk about today were the general world that we're creating, um, the challenges that we face so far, our basic mechanics, and kind of the way that our team is constructed. So, um, Emily, what are the things that you would use to describe the Poe world? So the first book world that Finley's going to have to go into and fix is that of Edgar Allan Poe. We chose Poe for a variety of reasons, one of which being the first thing that most people associate with Poe is a very serious dark, depressing atmosphere, which is good for us because that automatically puts us into a more serious gamer mindset, which is what we're trying to achieve. But Poe's not just limited to that. He actually has an amazing breadth of work with a bunch of romances and comedies and very humorous pieces that helps us create a more tongue-in-cheek tone. All right, so one of the biggest challenges that we faced so far in development was the issue of camera. Now, um, when we were designing the game, we originally wanted the game to be a cinematic camera, the kind that you see in like God of War and some JRPGs. However, the problem that we faced was that there was issues of scope. Like, we weren't sure if we were going to be able to make it in time, and it would have to be absolutely perfect, otherwise it would turn out being awful. So what we decided on instead was a mouse look camera, the kind that you see in Lara Croft or in Kingdom Hearts, like the typical first-person action-adventure camera. And then we're incorporating trigger boxes, which place focus on certain elements within the scene. So say we have a raven tower within our town square. When you step into a box, it will focus entirely upon that tower. As Finley runs around the town square, she can incorporate or she can talk to other people within it. But it will always place focus on that one thing, which gives us control over the art that we normally wouldn't have. One of the things that we really want to focus on in the game um, are the words that you encounter because, like I said, vocabulary allows you to shape the environment. One of the main ways it does that is it actually changes what your sword is. So, for example, one of our swords that we have in the game is the incendiary sword, which that typically, that, that's like a flame sword, but we don't want it just to be a flame sword like every other game. So we've had to come up with ways that we can represent the words and also work that into combat so that we get a fun experience. And balancing that has been a bit challenging because we also want to system by which we can make lots and lots of components so that we can construct swords easily instead of having to hard code all of them. Now, talking about having words shape the environment, that's kind of the approach that we're taking for boss battles. Now, when Finley approaches a boss arena, there will be quick time events that allow the player to choose words that will affect the bosses that they get. So, for example, the black cat that we're making is going to have three words, macabre, surreptitious, and corpulent. Now, each of these words, if you look them up anyways, are very, very different. Macabre is really scary, surreptitious is kind of like a ninja cat, and corpulent is horribly fat. Now, you can imagine how this would impact not only the models that are being made, but the AI behavior of those models. So these three different cats that you're presented with, you actually get to choose one and then end up fighting. And this is supposed to be a big spectacle of the event, and it's kind of a big reward to players and uh, a positive learning experience because you choose the word, and then not only do you see its definition, but you actually get to interact with that definition for a set amount of time. This creates some design challenges because that means we have to make sure that the cats that we're crafting actually reflect the word that we want to get across to players. So they take away from that experience the actual meaning and context of the word rather than just having pure fun. So that's about all the time that we have here right now. Um, next week on Pend, we're actually going to actually get you into the game engine to show you a little bit of what we have so far as well as the assets that we've made. Thanks. Thanks. 